when you uh, think about it, the weather is the, one of the great shapers of the world economy. You can think about, uh, talk about geopolitics, you can talk about uh, oil, but it's estimated just in the U.S. alone that half a trillion dollars of our GDP is weather dependent, uh, whether that's agriculture or transport, uh, transportation or other related fields. So weather is tremendously imp important around the, around the globe. Weather uh, is to keep in mind that it is one of the areas of central focus of policymakers, both in this country and uh, and globally. And when you think about all the topics that the President of the United States could have talked about when he gave his recent commence commencement address, he decided that the number one topic he needed to talk about was the role of weather and the impact that was going to have in both the uh, U.S. global presence, both militarily and diplomatically. And when you have something that's risen to that important a level, uh, being able to examine it at this conference and what it means to have weather transmitted digitally, collected digitally, uh, is key because it links up to all these much bigger global issues that are literally being addressed by the President of the United States. Weather dominates economies. Economies with limited access to weather data get dominated by it, e.g. agriculture, utilities, retail supply chains, uh, retail supply chains, insurance, travel, sport, and pharmaceutical. According to the National Center for Atmospheric Research, almost a half a trillion dollars of the U.S. GDP is sensitive to routine changes in the weather. And outside the U.S., the value of goods and services affected by the weather and the safety risks to people in it exponentially increases while the ability to accurately forecast the weather exponentially decreases. It's the more data that we get around the weather, the more accurate we become, but then the more personal we become to our users as well in understanding what type of weather information they actually want, what impacts them. Because there are people where the barometric pressure is extremely important if you're a migraine sufferer, um, you know, or humidity or dew points if you, if you have allergies. So those things are really important as we start um, using the data that we have from our fans over these past 30 years to really give more precise um, and more personalized forecast as well. So it goes beyond location as well. And we talked earlier about how important accurate weather forecasting is to the globe. You know what, what tiny, relatively small percentage of the globe's population resides in the U.S.? So can you tell them once again this important source of information how much of it is being gathered for the benefit of the 300 million people or so in the U.S. and what's left over for the rest of the uh, billions of people on the planet? It's, a, it, it's 80 percent. So the weather stations I didn't mention before, the data that the National Weather Service supplies is free. Anybody can have access to it. That is why there are over 480 commercial weather companies in the U.S. Most of the rest of the world does not have free access. North Korea, the U.K., Canada have quite sophisticated weather um, gathering information because they have defense satellites. And that's where a lot of it comes from. They also have a few weather stations. The rest of the world does not. So India, any BRIC country, um, think about it this way. There, there are thousands of miles in between weather stations. So most of the third world and, and developing countries rely completely and wholly on $40 smartphones. We are Japanese weather channel, mm -hmm. plus our weather maybe. So uh, we, we are very huge or dominate the Japanese market, but uh, and actually we are success to combine these kind of the social data and traditional the weather data. In, in Japan, we are very successful, but uh, because of Japan is very small and uh, company, so uh, it didn't spread. But we believe this technology should be spread all over the world mm -hmm. because a lot of the people suffer uh, because of the weather, flood or maybe the draft or something. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe the uh, 
especially the uh, developing country, they didn't have good budget to install the, the big legacy observation uh, system. But now it's growing rapidly. Mm -hmm. And the people have, Julia already mentioned, the air pressure is on the phone. And if we gather that kind of the data, maybe uh, combine the, uh, the existing weather forecast model, maybe that's going to be fantastic. So it's beyond the business.